So I'll go to this small presentation about the PESTLE framework, PESTLE model. I'll just start out a little bit with what and when to use PESTLE for, then I'll go through the different uh, areas or the different topics, the political, economical, social, the technical, legal and ecological topics and what to focus on in the different areas. When do we use it? Well, we use it when we're going to analyze a country or figure out how interesting this company is. And it's very, very important that each of the topics that we're looking at, we're looking at it from the perspective of the company which are interested in this market. Otherwise, we would just have a generic analysis which doesn't really make that much sense. You could get those reports all over the place. So when we analyze the market, whether to enter it uh, is one point. The other way of using it is when we are monitoring markets. We might already be present in this market and then we take a look at, okay, should we change how we do? Okay, and then it's used as a continuous monitoring for our activities in the market. But let's get into what it actually is. So the first P, the political. What's the political system? How does it work? Who do we speak to? What do we do? And what's the agendas going on there? Why is that we're looking at these agendas? Well, these agendas can affect how we can do business. If, for example, the left wing is coming into power, maybe some of the ecological or those kind of issues will be popping up and we will have an easier way if our products are in those categories. On the other hand, if it is right wing, traditionally law and order, if our products are in that category, then our products will have an easier time. It might also be something to do with the stability of the system. Can we actually act in this country in a continuous way? So what are the current political priorities is what we're looking for here and how it affects our business. Economical, that's why we're looking at the big macro numbers. How is the company or country doing in ways of economy? How is the unemployment rates? How is the GDP? Is it growth? Is it going down? Or how is it? Especially in these times with pandemics, we will have a very diverse look at the different countries. So these are the big numbers. How are things evolving? Do remember there is some things as inflation, which has an effect on the prices that we can take. There is something about the Gini coefficient, which is how big is the span between the rich people and the poor people? There might be a few very rich people, which means that we can sell very expensive luxury products for this market. How is the trend going? Is it going up? Is it going down? Or what well, don't we know? Be careful about this. History has shown us crises come, they pop up at different times, and they do have an effect. So, but Trends usually take some time to manifest. Next one, S, P-E-S, PEST. And the S is for social. Social, how do people live together? How do they interact? You can take out uh, Hofstede's uh, cultural theories in here, for example, or Lewis. Uh, but also look at the family structures. Is it big families living together, which means that our products need to be in big boxes? Uh, or is it a lot of single people? Well, we need to strip it in small boxes. Uh, how is it that they interact? Is it a gift-giving culture? Well, maybe we should have a product variation which can be given as a gift. This is the what we're looking for in the social. This is also one of the things which does not change very rapidly. So it's not something that is so interesting as the monitoring parameter, but it does change over time, influence from different cultures and so forth. The next one is technological. This is 
where I often see students stumble a little bit. What does it actually mean? Technical, logical is actually the infrastructure. How is technology dispersed into the country that we're looking at? How is it used? For example, the internet connectivity, the mobile distribution. How can we communicate? Can we have a Skype meeting or a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting with potential business partners here? Or do we need to go there physically because connections are not stable enough? Uh, can we do digital marketing here? Or should we use billboards next to the highways, etc.? So these are the things that define what we can do also what type of products that we can offer in the, pro uh, in the country. Is it highly automated? Well, then it doesn't make sense to come with a product which needs a lot of manual labor because most likely it'll be too expensive. So technological advancement is what we're looking for here in order to look at the business possibilities. Law, the legal framework uh, is extremely important. We can have the best product, we can have the best prices, but if we cannot make a contract that we can enforce, we will get into trouble. And that's what we're looking at here. How is the law set up? What kind of contracts do we need? What kind of trade taxes is relevant here? Customs borders and, and those kind of things. And how are things changing? Maybe some regulation is coming in regarding our product. Maybe we need some new certifications for it. Those kind of things we need to be aware of. And this is the place where we would use a lot of monitoring continuously. Ecological is one of the new additions to this framework. Ecological is the environment. How are things going? What kind of, of course, regulations are in place, which also leads a little bit up to the other one. Uh, how does people think about it? Do they appreciate uh, products which are, say, organic or fair trade and, and those kind of things? Or is it even a country which is going to be flooded in the next few years or hurricane prone? How do we safeguard our products or business regarding these issues? All right. So that was the quick introduction to the PASTEL framework. Thank you for listening in.